Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanics tutorial. And in this one we're going to be rigging this hovercraft. So we're going to be creating a hovercraft simulation. And in order to achieve this we're going to be using a number of different things. For a start we'll be using the brand new rigid body dynamics which appear in C4D 2024. That's essential to actually make this work. We'll also be using a soft body and we'll be joining the two together using a connector. We'll be using a wind force in order to drive the hovercraft and make it scoot around. And we'll be using Expresso to control the rudder and a few other different parameters. I've made the scene file available for this particular tutorial because I don't want to go through the build, I just want to do the rigging. So you can download that via a link that I've posted in the show notes. But anyway, that's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. OK, let's take a quick look at the file and see what we've got in it. Now at the top, I've simply got a camera that's going to follow the hovercraft as it zooms around the scene. So that's all that's doing is just it's got a target on it so that it can do that. These objects here these are just in the scene as like colliders, just to, just to add a little bit of interest to the actual animation so that you see the, the hovercraft actually hit them and bounce off them and bounce over them. That's the kind of thing I'm doing with those, so nothing particularly special going on there. This tracer, I'm using that as a, a kind of a, a, an aid really, just to trace the path that the hovercraft actually follows so that I can place these things in its way at certain points. That's what I've done that for. So you'll see me use that a little bit later. Let's see what else we've got in the scene. The null, I don't even know why that's there now. I think we can probably lose that actually. Uh, I don't think we need that particular null. Let's just get rid of that one. And we've got everything else. Now the plane, which is obviously the flat plane that the thing travels around along, I've put a displacer in there. And if we just click on that, we can just see what's going on. The strength is left at 100, the height at 20 centimeters. You can adjust this if you want it higher or lower, please adjust it. But you, you know, there will be some differences in the animation if you do that, but it's there to have a play around with. The shading, custom shader in the channel, um, the, the actual shader here, I've just added a noise if we click on this. We can see that I haven't really adjusted anything in here apart from the type of noise. I've changed it from a, a, a basic noise to a turbulence uh, and I've just left everything the same. You can play around again with this, do whatever you like with it, but uh, that's what I've just done for the sake of the tutorial. So that's the plane and, and the actual displacer looked at. The originals, we, can't, we don't need to worry about those. They were just original objects that I used when I brought them in to actually build the the hovercraft and if I wanted to make any adjustments I you know had the originals there that I could start again with if I needed to so we can place those out of the way just leave them at the top the most important part is the hovercraft itself so we've got the skirt and if we just come out of our camera we can take a look at our objects okay so the skirt let's just switch back to model mode let's take that away okay just a simple uh, it started life as a, as a torus uh, and I just cut it in half and, and did some work just to make it into the shape that you see there. Similarly with this platform that the cabin and the various other bits and pieces sit upon, this was just a simple cylinder that I just did some work with in order to fashion it into this shape. The prop, which is the propeller here, started life as a cylinder six sides so that we could get the six blades and then I just matrix extruded and then extruded that's all I did to create that shape and as you can see the end result looks really nice it's given us a really great shape for a propeller and then dropped it into a subdivision surface prop support again just a, it's, it's just a cube that I've just adjusted the sizes of here you can see the object properties that's all I've done to that and the axle, again, just a simple cylinder and just adjusted the radius and the height, left everything else the same for the sake of it. And the rudder, that started life as a cube and I just did some extra bits and pieces to it, an extrusion and then worked with the endpoints here just to fashion it into something resembling a rudder. 
and that's all I've done. And then of course the axes are here. I made sure that the axes were at this point so that it could rotate and it would behave properly. That's that's as much as I've done there. Down here I've got a null. It's got a wind object. If we just bring that in, um, we can actually have a look at the wind objects. Just zoom out, see if we can see that. There we go. We've got the wind there. And the wind object is used to blow the hovercraft around. Now it's essential that you group this wind object into the platform because this is going to be the rigid body object. If you group it into the skirt, you'll find that it won't work. If we just bring a, a file in, if I just do a new project here, let's just bring in a sphere. We'll bring in a plane and just move the plane down. If we just take a look at the way the soft body is working, because this is quite important. Now, if we give this plane a collider tag, so let's just do that simulation. Where are we collider down at the bottom and the sphere? If we give this a soft body tag, we've got the soft body set up. We just deselect that. Now, if we run the simulation and just drop this down, it drops to the ground and it will bounce around and then come to a standstill. But if we select the sphere, we can see that its axes are here. So that's very interesting, isn't it? You'd expect the sphere's axes to be at the center of it, but no, it doesn't work like that. If we bring that back up here, see if we can see this in garage shading lines, just drop that down. Right, it, it leaves its axes behind. But if we take the soft body off and we give it a rigid body, and we drop it now, its axes drop with it. So the rigid and soft body is working completely different ways. It's as if I, I'm pretty sure the, the actual soft body creates a kind of instance of the object and leaves the original where it was. That's what it kind of seems to do. Um, so they work in different ways. So for that reason, it was worth showing you that. I'm just going to close this now because we don't need it anymore. Um, but it was, I don't want to save it. Just close it. Don't save it. That's it. It was worth showing you that because if you do group anything into the skirt, you'll find that it'll just be left at the start of the animation. It won't move anywhere. So always group into the, the actual rigid body. And the, the thing that's quite nice about the rigid body, it seems to me that the, the only object that is rigid is the platform itself. It seems to ignore everything else. It doesn't seem to say these are essentially a compound collision shape as with bullet dynamics. It doesn't work like that. We have we don't even have that option, actually, uh, as you'll see in a minute. So it's quite interesting the way this works. But anyway, that's enough of the discussion. Let's start by getting the dynamics set up and then we'll have a play around from there. We've got the skirt selected, so let's give that a soft body tag. And we can see that we've got our springs set up, but we need to do some adjustment within the surface tab. I found that bendiness should be about four. That seems to work quite nice for this. The stretchiness, I'm going to say one. And the bounciness, 0.8. I found that combination actually works quite nicely with this. Again, feel free to play around with it, but uh, that seems to be good. Now the friction, I'm just going to lower to 0 0.4 and everything else can be left as it is. OK, so that's the settings or the, the kind of sweet spot that I found for the settings for the soft body. So we can see that that just falls away if we just run the sequence at this moment in time. What I'm also going to do is just switch off this wind because I don't want that initially. Now, it will fall through at the moment because, of course, the plane doesn't have a collider tag. So let's give the plane a collider tag. We'll get that done. Simulation collider. And let's see what happens now. And now our soft body just drops a little bit and it sits on the surface of our plane. So that's working fine for the moment. We will need to do a little bit of an adjustment in the plane's friction. I'm just going to make that 0.1. That's as much as we need to do in there. But again, please play around with this and see what happens. 
leave the bounce at point two. The next thing we can worry about is the platform with the all important rigid body. So we'll bring that into there. It works in a very similar way to the bullet dynamics. And we've got the dynamics tab here, which looks very similar. There's a lot of similarities. It's not all exactly the same, but a lot of it most definitely is. But anyway, we can leave this as it is. We don't need to touch it. The same should apply to the collision, but we'll take a quick look in there and see what's going on. Let's have a look, see what we need to do. Well, the collision shapes, I mean, we'll just have a quick look at this, actually. The collision shapes, we've got auto, triangle mesh, convex hole, sphere and box. As I said to you earlier, there's no such thing as a compound collision shape. It doesn't care about that anymore. So we don't need to worry about any of these. We'll leave it in auto, which will give us a, a pretty darn good result, actually. Um, it's similar to convex hole. It will, that will give us a really good result. Um, so we'll leave it there. Friction, again, if you want to change the friction, you, you can, but there's not really any real need because this is being carried around ultimately by the soft body. So I'm, I, we don't really need to do an awful lot in here, actually. We could just leave it as it is uh, and, and just worry about the rest of it, really. The other thing that we do need to adjust, though, is the mass. But what we'll do, if we just... Let's have a look, see where we are. What I'm going to do, in fact, is connect the objects first and then we'll, we'll take a look at that mass afterwards. Let's have a look. So go into our skirt and we'll get a connector. So simulation, connector. Now, don't be tempted to put the connector on the platform. If you do and you try to connect the two objects together, you'll find nothing will happen. You have to put it on the skirt. And I think it's because of this hierarchy. The skirt's the parent. I think that's why that works that way. But anyway, we've got this selected. Now, the, the maximum connections, I'm just going to say one. I don't want three. The search radius will be OK because these are very, very close together. The search radius of one centimetre should work fine. Leave everything else as it is. But before we do any more, we've got to select both the skirt and the platform and we need to select points mode. Right now, as skirt, we can see that we've got a row of points around here already selected. That's fine, that's what we need. We've just done a loop selection around there. The platform, a similar story around here. I've got some extra points in here which were, they don't need to be worried about. I mean, it's just the way I modeled this. I could do a better job with that actually, but I just modeled it that way and I just, it's got some extra points with these engons here. But don't worry about those. We've got the ones selected that we need. So if we then go back into our connect object here and we say create, we can see that we've done it. We've got the yellow points all the way around the thing and they're the same on the other side. They're all the way around. So we've, we've got the two connected. Let's just run the timeline and see what happens. So straight away, <laughs> that's not really what we want, is it? So this platform at the moment is too heavy. So with our platform, if we just select our rigid body tag again we need to change this density and we need it to be the smallest value we can make it which is 0 0.0001 that's where it needs to be and if we play the sequence now we can see it works fine now it's wobbling about a little bit and that's a problem that we need to address what we need to do to, to fix that is hit command D so that we, we come into our project in our simulation tab here, we need to work within the simulation tab, within the simulation tab, uh, and have a look at what's going on in here. Now, the smoothing iterations is the key. That's the really key one. Everything else can be left the same. The pass is here, the sub steps, the iterations. Leave that, but just give it two smoothing iterations, and that should help solve things. And we can see that's it's already better, isn't it? It's slowed down a little bit, but it's much better. That's great. That's what we need it to be. And that's how you set this part of all of this up. It really is quite simple to do, but you, it's about finding sweet spots. You know, so if you get a bit of jiggling about between your objects, come into the project settings, 
adjust the smoothing iterations. You, you can play around with these if you like first, but I found that all I needed to do was this. It's just literally about finding sweet spots throughout all of it. But anyway, we've got the two of those connected and we can move on from here and start trying to make this thing skate around by using the wind. We'll take a look in our wind. Now, the wind speed at the moment is set to five centimeters. That's not going to be anywhere near enough. It needs to be 1000. So we'll set that up. We'll also click this so that it's actually on. If we just go back to our camera so that we see this from a distance, we can see we've got our winds directly behind the hovercraft and it's ready to do its job. Let's have a go and see what happens. And straight away, the hovercraft starts to move, which is nice. That's what we want. So that's actually starting to work. We could do with a few more frames. We'll give ourselves 1,000 in there. That's better, 1,000. And that's now working as it needs to. That completes the actual setup for the, the wind object in terms of what we need to do in here. We don't need to change the mode or the turbulent scale or any of that. We can just leave that as it is. We don't need to worry about any of it. But the, the essential thing is to make it 1000 centimeters for the actual wind speed. Moving on from here, we can think about controlling the direction of the wind because obviously we use this to actually change the direction of the hovercraft. The rudder doesn't do anything. It has absolutely no dynamic properties whatsoever. But, uh, you know, it's obviously needed to make the animation look convincing, but the wind is actually the thing that controls the direction of the hovercraft. So in order to control the actual direction of the wind, we will be using Expresso, and that will be our next port of call. We'll bring in a null, name it Expresso, give it the Expresso tag. Our window is open and we're ready to start work. First thing we need to bring in will be a time node. So we'll bring one of those in, remove the time port and add a frame port. Fantastic, so we've got that far. Now our wind, we might as well bring that in, drop it over here and at the input stage we want transform rotation and it will be rotation H. So that's ready to go. Our final node for now will be a range mapper so calculate and range mapper position it here and we'll connect the frame to the input fantastic so let's have a look and see what we've got down here our input range will be user defined our output range will be in degrees and our Input lower we can leave at zero and our input upper we can set to 1000 because of course we've got 1000 frames. So let's just put that in there. That completes the first part. The next thing we need to do is put minus 45 degrees in here and 45 degrees for the output upper. So that gives us quite a nice range to rotate our wind through. OK, let's move on and work with our spline because we do want to use the spline to control what's going on with the wind. So let's add our first point, which will be command click in there just to add that. And we will want it to be at zero along the X axis so we can set our point X to zero. And with regard to the Y axis, we want this to be 0.5. So halfway, not 0, 0.5, that's it. So halfway along the Y axis. The tangents, what we need to work with here, we can just leave this as it is actually, because we just need our right tangent to be 0 0.25. And it's grayed out at the moment anyway, so we can't actually do anything with it. Our second point, so we'll command click to add our second point. Point 0.2 along the x-axis and 1 along the y. 
and then we can worry about its tangents. Now these need to be very small on this occasion, so we'll put minus 0 0.05 in there. And it's perhaps worth noting that uh, we never actually need to break the tangents at any point during the course of doing this. Next thing we need to do is add another point. So again, command click in here. And that's good, but that's all set up okay. That's, that's working fine. If we click on there now, we can see that both tangents are there and they're set up accordingly and that's fine. So this one, what do we want to do here? Well, 0 0.4 is where we want that to be placed along the X. 0.5 along the Y. We'll set the tangent at minus 0.25. And that sets that up nicely. We can leave that as it is. We don't need to do any more there. And we can add our next point, 0 0.6 along the X, 0.5 along the y. Tangents once again minus 0.25 in there and we can leave that as it is. Our fifth point we'll place this at 0 0.6 along the or rather I beg your pardon 0 0.8 I should say 0 0.8 along the x-axis and for the Y, we'll actually bring this down to the bottom. So we'll say zero for the Y. Its tangent is actually fine. 0 0.05 is what we want for that. And then we just need our final point. So we'll command click to place that into the scene. And then we can work with this one. Now, this needs to be one along the X, 0.5 along the Y and its tangent will need to be minus 0.25. And that gives us the shape that I'm looking for, for our spline curve. Let's just see what we've got here. Yep, we can see that that's all matching up and it's all okay. So that will work nicely for us. That will do what I want it to do. If we connect this up to the wind, let's see what happens when we actually hit our start button. What I'll do first though is bring in the tracer. We'll actually use this now because it could be useful to us. We'll just take that off there. We don't need that on the tracer. So we've got that set up and ready and we'll see what actually happens. I'm going to also switch to my top view. So F2 and hit a H for the whole scene so that we can actually see what's going on. And we, we've got our hovercraft just over here with the wind object attached to it. So let's just see what happens. So off it goes and we can see that it's tracing its path. And we can see that the wind is starting to move. It's actually starting to change its direction. There we go, it's starting to rotate around. We can see that that's behaving, but the one thing that we can definitely see is that the hovercraft is not behaving as we want it to. The wind is changing direction and it's carrying it over here. We don't want that. We want the wind, when the wind changes direction, we need the hovercraft to rotate around here and move in a circle this way. So at the moment, things are not quite working the way we want them to. Now, in order to change that, we actually need to use friction and we need to create a friction map. And that's going to be our next port of call. The first thing I'm going to do is make the plane disappear. So I'll double click on the little dot there and get rid of that. The next thing to do is come out of this camera so that we're where our hovercraft is. If I select the skirt, we're in the wrong mode. We need to be in polygon mode. If we just rotate around here, we can see what we're doing. Now the polygons we're interested in, if we just get our brush selection tool we want these these three and these three that will be fine for creating a friction map because that's where we want the friction to be applied at the front of the hovercraft okay that's that's looking good so if we hit shift c we can type in p 
A-I-N, and we can get a paint tool. That's the tool that we want, this particular tool here. So we'll click upon that, and that brings this up. And all we need to do is apply selected, because we've got the selection made, and we did want an absolute for the mode. That, that's fine, we don't need to worry about any of this. The absolute is fine. So we've got our vertex map created, and that will be great. We can now click on a soft body here, and in the friction here, we can twirl this open, and we've got a map field. And we need to just drag this into here. So that's given us our friction map. If we bring our plane back, go back into our camera, we can switch to our top view and see if we get a different behavior. I don't think this is going to be perfect yet, but we'll see what we get. Well, away we go. And we're moving in a straighter line. We can see that that's already a bit different to perhaps what we had before. And let's see what happens when our wind starts to move. Well, we can see that the hovercraft is reacting in the correct way. It is starting to move differently to what it was before, but it's going to end up going off the edge of the world at the moment because things are not quite right. But we can see that we are starting to get that curve. So that's on the right road. We're in the right direction. So let's just go back to our 3D view. But there's a few more things that we perhaps need to do in order to get this to work. For a start, let's go back into our Espresso expression and bring in a compare and we'll also bring in a condition. Let's bring one of those in. Okay, so we've got those set there. We can plumb the output of the frame port from the time into the input one of the compare. And we'll make this greater than or equal to. Now initially we'll say 350 frames and plumb the output of the compare into the switch. Now with our condition, if we say 0.4 and 0.6, and then all we need to do is bring in our soft body object and from our surface here, we just need the friction. So we'll increase the friction after 350 frames. Now we may need to make some adjustments here. 350 might not work, but we'll leave that as it is for now. Now the next thing, all of these objects here, I'm going to give simulation collider body tags or collider tags so that we've got those set up and we'll leave them exactly as they are. We don't need to change them. Let's just switch to our top view once again. So F2, click off those so that we're not selecting them. And let's just see what happens. In fact, what I'll do, I'll just switch back to my 3D view. So F1, we'll watch it move and see how it jumps over the ramp because that's our first object. It's going to hit the ramp and jump over it. We might as well see that happen. We, there we go. And it bounces perfectly and everything stays together as one object. Now let's just hit F2 and see what's going on up there. So there we go, our hovercraft is turning. We haven't reached 350 frames yet, so I don't think that's gonna work. We're still gonna go off the edge of the plane. But it is starting to try to actually work, isn't it? So we've got options here. If we go back into our Espresso with our compare, let's just make this 200. Take it right down and see if that makes a difference that we can work with. If it doesn't, we'll move the plane object. But you do have to do a lot of this. There is a, there's some trial and error involved in this because you are at the mercy of the dynamics. It's not like working with keyframe animation or Espresso. So we're over 200 frames now, so that extra friction has kicked in. It still might not be enough, though. I don't think it's going to be, is it? So, No, we're going to have the same problem. So what we'll do is get a hold of our plane object and we'll just move this over here. Just drop that in there and let's see what happens now. 
and off we go. We've jumped over our ramp. And let's see what happens now. Yep, so we're we are moving in an arc. Here we go. Ah, there we go. Now we're moving in a nice circle. Yep, that's doing a job for us. Yeah, that's moving it more more the way I wanted it to move. So that's fine, and and we'll get to the stage where our wind object will turn in the opposite direction as it is starting to, I think now. And that's going to make our hovercraft veer off in a different direction. And away it goes. Just have to hope that it turns before it leaves the plane, which it is. So yeah, that's behaving okay. And we're at the end of the animation, so that's okay. That's behaving the way that we would want it to. Now, what I need to do is place these various objects in positions where it's going to actually hit them and be affected by them. But what I'll do is do that by the power of editing and then I'll come back to you when I've got it working. And I've got all of my objects in now and we'll take a look at the simulation and see what we get. And it's actually very pleasant. The actual path that the hovercraft takes has been changed. Uh, that always happens when you put obstacles in the way. So it comes around here now and it will slide over the tube object. That's the first thing it does. And we'll hit the cylinder now and bounce over that. <laughs> And it's still continuing to move in a, in a circle at the moment and it's just a slightly different path that it's taken this is a wider circle now for this second pass and now it will head towards the pyramid object and bounce over that and there we go and that's tipped it off in a slightly different direction there and now we're heading towards the sphere, which it will hit sideways and just bounce over that. And there we go. And now we're at the end of the animation. Fantastic. So that's all working perfectly well and we're getting a nice result there. Now at the moment, the rudder and the prop are not actually doing anything. So the next port of call for us will be to make those work. And we'll start with the prop. To get the prop working, perfectly simple, we just come back into our Expresso expression here, bring in another range mapper, so I'll just command, drag to copy this one, connect the frame port to the input, and we need to set this up. Now, it's actually set up reasonably well already. The only thing we don't need to use is the spline, so we'll click off that. We also need to put a value of 10 in our input upper and our output upper or output lower, I beg your pardon, zero degrees in there and minus 360 degrees in our output upper. That's all we need to do to set that up. And then we'll bring the prop in and we want rotation B at the input stage. So we've got that set up and then we can just simply connect this here. 
And if we run the sequence now, we can see that we've got our prop moving. So that's all good. And away we go. And we can see that that's working fine. So that's the prop taken care of. The final thing we need to worry about is the rudder. The first thing that we can do is command drag to copy this range mapper, plumb the frame output into the input there, and we're ready to move on from here. Now, all of this can stay the same. So the input upper and lower, output upper and lower, they're fine. The spline, on the other hand, we need to make some changes because the wind and the rudder won't actually match up. So we'll delete these points first. Now, if we bring in the rudder, give it a rotation H port. So transform rotation, rotation H at the input stage. We can then connect this up and the rudder stays centered as should be the case. Now let's just run the sequence and see what happens here. So we're jumping over there, that's fine. And let's see what happens. If we just go into our top view, hit H so that we can just see what's going on. If we just zoom in, just want to zoom in here so that we can see where we are. We can see the rudder is still straight, that's fine. Let's play the sequence through. In fact, what I'll do with the rudder, we'd like to see it all, wouldn't we? So let's go into garage shading lines, and that gives us a better view. We can see what's going on with the rudder. Now, the rudder appears to be starting to move. That's fine. That's what it needs to do. Yes, and it is. We can see that that rudder is starting to turn, and the, and the hovercraft is turning at the same time. That's great. That's really nice. Yes, that's starting to work. So yes, at the moment they're in sync and that's fine. They are working really nicely together, but it won't always be the case. So let's see what happens now. We're going to run down there. Yes, yes, that's perfect. That at the moment is fine. So let's just watch what happens here. Bounce is over there. Yeah, that's still okay. That's all good at the moment, so we don't need to make any changes. Yeah, that's bouncing over there perfectly well. You can see that at the moment, though, that the wind is actually straight, but it, it, it still is making the hovercraft move in an arc, which is, is fine. The rudder at the moment is perfectly good. That's still doing its job, so we don't need to change that at all but we will need to change it before too much longer because this is going to throw this off in a different direction. So at that point, I mean, what we can probably think about doing, if we make another point, let's go back into our expression here. What we can do, add another point. So we know that this is going to last for a very long time. It's gonna go along here. We probably don't need to do much there, but this point I'm going to just bring down. Now, at the moment, that is all right, but let's just make sure that it's doing it at the right point. So if, if we just go back to the beginning, I'm going to run the animation again, and we'll just keep an eye on what's going on. Let's just move this out of the way. That will go back into our 3D view for a minute, just so that we entertain ourselves. But I've, it's important to show you this stuff because this is crucial to making this work and you need to see the actual workflow for how we're going to actually do this. So all is good, as I say, until we hit the pyramid. So we'll go through there. Yeah, everything's still good at the moment. It needs to change direction, I think, just 
as we're approaching the pyramid. Let's see where we are. Yeah, about now, I think, is when it needs to start changing direction. So there, we can just drag this back somewhere over there. And let's just play the sequence and see what happens. And yes, that is good. If we go into our top view, we can see that we're in the opposite direction now. And let's just see what happens. And yes, now is when it, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. That's pushing the hovercraft round in the opposite direction. That's great, fantastic. So that is perfect. It hits there and we're coming towards the end of the animation and we're still moving in a circle. That's fine. So that is the setup that we need to create for our spline. And we can see now that this is going to work fine. That's not working correctly there. We just need to bring this back. It should work if we just do this. Let's just bring that back to where it was. Yep, that's working fine. So yes, that's the way you go about setting the rudder up and making it synchronize correctly with what's actually happening with the rest of the hovercraft. And it will give you a very convincing result. Actually, one thing I'd like to see in the range mapper here, I'd like to see a a line that actually sweeps across and represents what's going on in the timeline so that you could actually synchronize everything using the correct timings. That would be brilliant. It'd be a fantastic feature if it had that. But uh, yeah, that's something I would really love to see Maxon do. So maybe if we all suggest this, they might actually do it. But uh, you can but try. <laughs> but anyway, it's just a thought that came to me while I was doing this. But yeah, that is how you go about making a hovercraft simulation. Let's just make the wind disappear because we don't need that anymore. And as you can see, it all works really beautifully and the rigid bodies and soft bodies work fantastically well together and give you the result that you need to get. And of course, the only other thing that we can do, if we take this back to the beginning, we could just select say the um, rigid body here and we can go into our cache and we can cache the scene and we might just as well do that I'll, I'll do it and then come back to you by the power of editing and we'll see the final animation right we've got it cached let's see what we get I think it's really wonderful. <laughs> it's just great the way it works. Beautiful. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, fantastic result. Really, really good. I mean, it's very believable. It really does behave like a hovercraft. And this has been something I've wanted to do for a long time, but I couldn't do it. Uh, I tried to do it with the bullet dynamics, but it just wouldn't work. You cannot connect the... Uh, the hard and soft bodies in the correct way it just doesn't work but this is fantastic and it's very very easy to set it up actually they've done a brilliant job with this yeah but anyway that just about brings us to the end of this tutorial because that's what i wanted to show you and as always i really hope you've enjoyed doing this one and that it's been inspiring and that you've got some ideas from some of your own projects from this one and if you have enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and, of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, happy hovering and I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.